From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ray Rowland, Johnny. Oh, hi, Ray. Just got your message. What are you doing in Philadelphia? Oh, a case for Philly Mutual Liability and Casualty, and I may need your help. What do you know about Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote? Why, he's one of Scotland's finest. Wait a minute. That's your case? Yep. Insurance? And bodyguard. How's about lunch? Johnny, have you met the... Have you met his lairdship? Yeah, and I nearly lost a leg doing it. Oh, then you know. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Oh, shut up. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company, in connection with my investigation, or rather my involvement in the Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote matter. And I wish I'd had some idea of what I was getting into before I ever left Hartford. But it's too late now. Expense account item three, thirty-nine fifty. One pair of slacks. For within a few minutes of my arrival in Philadelphia, Harry Branson of Philly Mutual buttonholed me and dragged me up to his office to meet two important clients he had. First was Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten. Oh, you wonderful, wonderful man. I am so glad that you've agreed to take on this assignment. Laird Douglas Douglas means everything to me, and I have the utmost confidence in you. I'm sure Laird Douglas will, too. And then came... Well, Mrs. Van Pyten made the introduction. Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscote, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, Holy oh, jumping. Johnny, 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 oh, no, you mustn't do that. Oh, my. Johnny, oh, dear, good heavens. Get on your own chair, Harry. This one's taken. Sorry, John. Sorry. Down, Douglas. Down. There, dear. That's the boy. That's a nice boy. That is Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscope? Yes, isn't he adorable? He's so playful. He was really just playing, you know. There, dear. Come now. Harry. Yes, John? This is the client you call me all the way down from Hartford to see? Yes, John. Yes. $7.50 a week. Practically unlimited expense account. Oh, dear. Just look at your trousers, Mr. Dollar. I don't need to, thanks. I can feel the draft. But you'll need new ones. Here. And I insist you let me pay for it. Down, Douglas, down. Here, Mr. Dollar. Will a hundred dollars be enough? Uh, she. No, here, a hundred and fifty. I can see those were very, very nice. Well, uh, you see what I mean, John? Here, please. Now, I insist you take it. And if it isn't enough... No, 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 thanks. That's plenty. But now, Harry, you listen to me. John, I know what you're going to say, but as I explained to you on the way up to my office... You explained plenty, but not nearly enough. But I tried. I really tried. I think you and I had better have a quiet little talk, Harry, and the sooner the better. Oh, boys, please, can't you do that another time? Please come down from those chairs so Mr. Dollar can meet Douglas and we can make all the arrangements. Please? Mrs. Van Pyten, that's precisely what I want to talk about. <laughs> you really look very funny up there. And C. Douglas does want so much to be friends with you. Yeah, you're sure it isn't a piece of my leg he wants. Oh, no, of course not. Here, Mr. Dollar, just give him one of these biscuits. I have them specially baked for him, and he'll be your friend for life. Really? Huh? Here, now just come down and hand it to him. Well... He'll love you. It's true, John, I know. Yeah? Then what are you doing up on that chair? I... I forgot, that's all. Nice, Douglas. Huh? Please, Mr. Dollar. Well, hey, oh, all I hope is he doesn't forget. That's right. Just hand it and to him. And then he knows which is biscuit and which is my hand. <laughs> Yo, uh, here, boy. Here, boy. Now, take it easy, take it easy. Oh, 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 oh. There you see. Now he's your friend, well, isn't that sweet? Yeah, yeah, sure is. Well, well, I'd better get back to my hotel and change it. Harry, I'll call you. Oh, but we haven't made the definite arrangements yet, and I'll want you staying out at our place in Germantown, the Maples. It's a lovely little place, Mr. Dollar. Well, much as I hate to say it, I'm, I'm not quite sure about taking oh, this Oh, I know. The money. Well, don't you worry about it. Not at all, not one bit. If you'd rather have $1,000 a week, that's what we'll make it. And I do wish Mrs. you'd let Van me Pyton. do more about these poor trousers. I know. 
Why don't you go straight over to Wanamaker's men's store and have them tailor you a whole suit? Wouldn't that be nice? You'd look lovely. You've in... already given me more than enough oh, to buy a suit. that. Now, just forget it. Now, you have them make you anything you want and just charge it to me. Oh, and look! Douglas Deere is licking your hand. I knew he'd like you. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of a woman, somebody once said. Or maybe they should have said never underestimate the power of a fast buck or a thousand bucks. Anyhow, Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten had set her heart on my handling this whole affair, and she simply wasn't to be denied. Couple that with a chance to pick up enough loot in a few days to, uh, well, what would you do? And the darn mutt did take a liking to me. So, with Laird Douglas Douglas in my lap... Oh, he's a Scotty, by the way. Scottish Terrier, Mr. Dollar. If you'll pardon my correcting you. Sorry. And it's all because of the show at Bala Kinwid on Friday. Bala where? Uh, B-A-L-A-C-Y-N-W-I-D, John. Yes, Bala Kinwid. Laird Douglas Douglas simply must win. Not only best of class, but best of show. And he will... If somebody doesn't interfere. Oh, you uh, you think somebody might uh, might do something to to uh, Douglas? Here? I'm sure of it, because he's been tried before. You mean poison him or something like that? Worse. Oh. Dope. Poison would let him die a hero, a martyr, but drugs would keep him from winning the show. Oh. I... Well, what makes you suspect somebody might try it? As I said, it's been tried before. Huh? Last year and again a few days ago. And if Harrison R. Kenworthy thinks he can do it again, he's mistaken. Then you know who did it before. I refuse to divulge any names. But you just said... Mr. That... Dollar, I will not tell you. All I ask is that you watch over Laird Douglas Douglas until he has won the show. Oh, and if he does win, as I'm sure he will, I'll insist that you accept a nice bonus. So you can see, I'm very, very serious. And so it went on for another half hour or so. And finally she left, after I'd promised to pick up my bags at the hotel and move out to her joint in fashionable Germantown. I talked a few minutes longer with Harry Branson. I'm so glad you've agreed to take this on, John. As I told you, Mrs. Van Pyten is the most important individual policyholder we have, and doing this favor Harry, for Harry, it's not the Mutt Show at Bala Kinwood or Laird Douglas or Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten or you I'm doing this for. It's purely love of the green stuff. Whew. That old dame must be really loaded. John, she has so much money. She, well, she doesn't know how much she has. Industrial empire, that sort of thing. All right, all right. But, Harry, if word ever gets around in the trade that I came down here to play bodyguard to a mutt, so help me, I'll have your head. <clears throat> yes. Uh, but now, hadn't you better go on out to the Maples? Well, first I want to know about this Harrison R. Kenworthy she mentioned. Oh, that. Yeah, that. She accused him of doping up her Scotty. Well, she really doesn't know, and it, it's really quite complicated. What do you mean? Kenworthy owns a beautiful Kerry Blue Terrier, Lady O'Diddy's Rolamar Maine. Lady o Holy cats, and no pun. Why can't they give an honest dog an honest name? Look, we'll call her Mimi. Go ahead. Hi, dog lovers. Ray, just in time. Meet Harry Branson, Ray Roland. Oh, we know each other. Hello, Harry boy. Mr. Roland. Sure, Harry called me in last year when these two dogs were at each other's throats. Of course, throats. he doesn't mean that literally, John. You see, Mr. Roland is quite an authority on show animals. I've held it against him for years, ever since school. Well, there's no need to hold it against him. And particularly. I don't mean that literally. Oh. Well, John boy, so you came down to help yourself to a handful of dear Mrs. Kelly Vian Python's coin. More power to you. I knew Harry would call you in on the case. Felt it in my bones. And, brother, you may be in deeper than you think. Oh, what's that supposed to mean, Ray? Has Harry told you about the villain of the piece, Harrison R. Kenworthy? I was just starting to when you so rudely... Yeah, well, Johnny, the whole setup is a riot, but just remember one thing. Yeah? A lot of people have been killed in riots. Now, what's that supposed to mean? I'll tell you what he means. Let sir. me he tell mean... it, Harry. It would take you all day. Uh, sorry, no offense. It's all right. Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead. Okay, Bella Kenwood is the biggest event of the year in the doggy set, okay? Okay. All right. Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten owns Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscope. Real fine Scotty. Yeah, good tea, see? Hey, those pants are really gone. Anyhow, Harrison Kenworthy owns Lady O'Diddy's Rolamar Meme, Carrie Blue. Mimi. Huh? I'd get indigestion trying to say that other name. Okay, Mimi. They're two pretty good dogs, especially Mimi, international championship blood and all that. But Mimi's the better dog. Douglas won't stand a chance. I've tried to tell her this, but... Well, go on, go on. Okay. Harrison Kenworthy loves Kelly Van Pyten, see? Oh, loves her money. Him? He's loaded, too. No, I think the old coot really loves her, and I think she loves him. Right, Harry? Yes, I think I'm inclined right, to... Right, but 
Now, get this. Yeah? She won't marry him until her Laird Douglas beats his Lady O'Diddy, uh, uh Mimi, yeah. far and squar at the Ballakinwood show. How do you like that? Are you kidding? Oh, no, John, it's an accepted fact. Right, so what happens for over wait a year Wait a minute, now, Ray, wait a minute. If he really wants to marry her, why doesn't he just let her dog beat his? And let her be one up on him right from the start? Never. No, boy, he'd never live it down. You don't know these people. Well, this is about the craziest thing I ever heard of. To you and me, sure, but to them it's deadly serious. Are they in love with each other or with their dogs? Well, it's not just love where the dogs are concerned, but pride, which is just about all a lot of these old lonely millionaires have to think about, to live for. Yea, sometimes even unto the fifth and sixth generation. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. But now she said something about her dog being doped at the show last year. Oh, yes, John. You see, it was just a couple of days. Right, just before the finals. It was an attempt to murder the dog with poison. But emergency care both times pulled Lair Douglas through. She told me it was only some kind of a dope that oh, was used. Oh, sure, sure. We kept the truth from her. You don't realize it, boy, but if that dog were to die, she would. Fact. Oh, now, Ray. Oh, yes, John. And the insurance company must keep that dog alive in order to obviate having to pay off her... Right. <laughs> After all, her policies amount to a right. Half... It may sound absurd to you, Johnny, but it's no joke. As I said, you don't know these people. But look, it still doesn't make any sense. You just have to take my word for it, and it's happened right here in Philadelphia. Yes, John, and we held the policy. It was an old lady... Right, named... so there you have it. <sighs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll believe you. And so the finger points at Harrison R. Kenworth. Well, she might like to think that, uh, especially since she doesn't know that poison was used both times, but I don't. What's more, the police feel the same. Oh, now, if you say police dogs, I'll slug you. John, there are times when the sense right, of humor Harry, of yours... Right, Harry, dead right, and I do mean dead. No, in all seriousness, Johnny, if I were you, I'd duck out of this assignment. Now, don't say that, Ray, unless John no, is No, hitting. no, no, go, go ahead and say it. Something ought to start to make sense around All here. All right, listen. The reason I'm sure Harrison R. Kenworthy had nothing to do with the attempted poisonings, the reason the police were called in, the reason I think you ought well, to get, get out to of this... get to the point, Ray? On each occasion, Mrs. Kelly Van Pyten had a bodyguard attending Laird Douglas, in addition to the dog's governess and medicos and so get on. Get to the point. Each time, in order for the poisoner to get to that dog... Ray, please. Each time, the bodyguard was murdered. Still want this case, Johnny? <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow? Well, the joke's no longer a joke. Especially when a killer trains his sights on me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>